Hi, I'm David Kratz, President and alum of the New York Academy of Art. Today we're here to talk about the Chubb Fellowship. This is an award that is given out to three deserving artists at the school at graduation every year. It's the highest award that the school has to give. The Chubb Fellowship is a one-year artist residency. During that time, they get a studio, a monthly stipend, a teaching assistantship. The fellowship culminates with a big show at the Academy where we celebrate the work that they did during the year. We are incredibly grateful to Chubb for making this program possible. The Chubb Fellows are chosen based on the work they've done during their time at the school, but even more importantly, the work that we think they're going to do in the future. Now we're gonna go into the studios of the three fellows and spend some time with each of them. First visit today will be with Maude Madsen, a very talented painter who originally came to us from Canada. Hey Maude. Hi David. Hey, it's great to be in your studio today. Thanks for coming. Why don't we start by talking about what your time at the Academy has, has meant to you as an artist? I think like most students here, I came in making uh, one body of work and then left making what at face value appears to be an entirely different body of work. Um, so I wanted to work with the body, I wanted to work with um, ideas around like body dysmorphia, but when I reflect back on it, my experience at the Academy, the skills I learned completely changed the way that I went about making that work. So Maud, the Chubb Fellowship is the highest award that the Academy has to give. What did you feel like when you got that award? It was very exciting. It was really exciting because um, not only did it mean like another year in the building, but it also meant like the time and the space and the resources to kind of make the work that I was envisioning as I envisioned it. There are a lot of really strong artists that have come through the Chubb program. And again, you know, you get to interact and know the Chubb Fellows as you're a student. Um, so something that I think, uh, you know, from my first days in the Academy was something that I, I was definitely interested in and aiming for. I mean, obviously having the space was a huge thing. Um, it meant that I got to, uh, I got to scale up. So uh, previously I was working at, you know, sort of similar to these scales, like nine by 12 drawings. And so getting the chance to turn them into huge paintings um, was a big plus for me. My work is all about sort of uh, pushing the body against the limits of the composition um, to sort of amplify those feelings of like um, anxiety and insecurities and discomfort. And so scaling it up, I think, you know, uh, makes you sort of question your relationship with the work. And it meant I got a lot of uh, sort of exhibition opportunities. So in January, I was in a group show at Marion Boski Gallery in Chelsea. That's a top gallery, that's yes. amazing. So, I, like, I'm at a loss for words about how much um, this year has meant for my practice. Well, Maude, I'm such a huge fan of your work, and I am really gonna miss having your studio right outside my office door. <laughs> that's yes. been a lot of fun. <laughs> Now we're going to visit Lujan Perez, a painter and printmaker from Spain. Hey Lujan. Hi, how are you? Good, it's nice to be in the studio with you today. Yeah, of course. So why don't we start by talking about your time at the Academy. The past three years have been probably the most intense and beautiful of my life, I think. I was aware of the Chubb Fellowship way before my time at the Academy. I became good friends with Esteban Ocampo, who was also a Chubb Fellow. And in 2016, I was coming to New York to visit. The Chubb Fellowship was one of the reasons why I decided to apply to the school. It seemed like a really unique experience seeing it through the eyes of Esteban. The fellowship year is this like magical space. You're looked upon from the second years and first years as, I guess, somewhat of an example of, you know, how to navigate being alive, making art in New York, and being able to be of support of people. Mm -hmm. It's a really unique experience still within the educational system. You know, I had developed relationships with the year below us for a year, um, and I was excited to like get to watch them grow and like, you know, fail and laugh and cry and mm -hmm. do all the things that I did during my second year, but still be able to say at the end of the day, like, it's okay, you got this, you know? I do lead a printmaking practice and those facilities are usually really expensive. So, you know, not only was it a stipend studio, I still had full access to the print shop, which I had made my home for the past two years. So one of the biggest conversations that I have in my head is the relationship that, you know, we as humans have with the world around us. 
For me, Luhan, your work is sort of at the intersection of printmaking and painting. I've drawn parallels to being bilingual, I guess, like thinking in, in two different languages. I, I see printmaking as one and painting as the other, and I'm so thankful for Chubb. It definitely felt like the big sigh of relief knowing that someone believed in me and my work. Well, Luhan, we are so excited to see how your work evolves, and thank you for having me here today. It's been a real pleasure to chat with you. Next, we're gonna visit Lydia Baker, a draftsman who makes up fantasy worlds inhabited solely by women. Hey, Lydia. Hey, David. I'm so happy to be in the studio with you today. Yeah, happy to have you. Tell me about your time at the Academy, what it meant to you as an artist. I came here because I really wanted to learn how to paint and to use color better. Um, ended up meeting some of my best friends, uh, which was a huge part of my experience. You came here to learn how to paint, but you ended up as a draftsman? Yeah, yeah, so my background is in drawing, that's what I studied in undergrad, and then studied color here and just got really into painting and then fell back in love with drawing. One of the things I always love about your studio is the thousands of colored pencils everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I love color, I'm mm. a big fan. <laughs> yeah, me too. When I was a student, I experimented a lot and dipped my toes in a lot of different mediums, and then as a fellow, I figured out the body of work I really want to make and I've started to grow and expand that. I feel very laser focused this mm -hmm. year has been like that. How many works did you make during this year? You're so prolific. Uh, maybe like 60 or 75. So they're all colored pencil drawings. Um, this particular work, I was after a couple different things. I really wanted to have a part of my work that I could slow down and do some very meditative mark making. Um, so that's what I did here um, for the ground. And then I was really focused on this word grace and trying to think of different ways I could depict it. What was the one thing about the fellowship that um, meant the most to you in terms of your artistic development? Um, I would say having this space mm -hmm. was the most important thing. Um, I was just excited to be here every day and I think also because of uh, COVID times, I didn't take a single day for granted. I can't thank Chubb enough. I'm just so grateful that I've had the time and the space to work here and have had a gift of another year at the Academy. Mm -hmm.